Welcome back to the Marching to Madness College Basketball Podcast, where I have my good friend Wayne Tinkle of the Oregon State Beavers here on with me. We all remember well the Beavers took the road, the high road to the NCAA tournament two years ago. They went to the Elite Eight. It was a really cool run, a really good thing for the Pac-12 that year, I think. I think there were four teams in the Sweet 16, and Coach Tinkle had his Beavers right there in the midst. Coach, welcome back. Great to be with you, Ken. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Hey, I was going to ask you before we, we move forward, I know you had a tough season last year. How how were you able to reboot the computer that is Oregon State basketball? Well, it's a it's a good question. We we really had to we had a couple of choices when you know when we knew we were going to turn the roster over. Uh, the main focus was getting our care, our culture back. And it started with making sure we were recruiting guys of high character. Um, and we made the decision to go young, which not very many people are doing these days. And right. we just felt like the way we do things and the way Oregon State kind of what it stands for is to build it, you know, from, from that ground floor up. And so we, we got a couple of transfers, young guys, but – guys that are experienced beyond their years, but high, high, high character guys. And then, and then in our high school recruitment, we went after talent, but we went after guys that we knew would let us coach them that would play together um, and, 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 and play hard the, the Beaver way. And when we have that combination, Ken, you, you know, it's been a, a success for us. So we're excited to be uh, back in the middle of that process. It's early, but we sure enjoy going to practice every day. Yeah, uh, tell me how – now, you, uh, you, you've got a really solid, strong, different group of kids with four, I think, four or five that were there last year. How do these kids approach basketball that's going to be a huge mantra for you if it builds as the season goes along? Well, yeah, we so we've got, I think, four guys back, one that sat out last year, Shoal Mariel, the transfer from Maryland. Uh, mm-hmm. But then Dexter Ocano, Glenn Taylor Jr., and, and Rodriguez Andela, uh, guys that were, you know, in the middle of it. And they, they know what cost us games last year. And it was just, you know, poor chemistry. Guys weren't didn't have each other's backs, didn't play hard, didn't play together. So they've set the tone this offseason with our new group. Um, and and we, we focused on guys, whether it was in the portal or, or you know, high school recruits, that would come in and play, you know, the old Carolina way, hard, smart, and together. Yeah. Uh, and there's no egos. They know that we have to depend on each other um, and that we we need to get back to playing that kind of in-your-face, staunch defense that will take some pressure off of our offense, but also let us score a little bit uh, mm-hmm. off of the defense. And we were very fortunate this year, Ken. We brought the guys in this summer worked together for a few weeks and went to Italy for a tour. And we got three games over there. It was great bonding experience. Uh, it really helped us kind of set the momentum for, uh, you know, how we were going to go about turning things around. And we told them much, much like that 2015 class with Trace, my son, Stevie mm-hmm. Thompson, Drew Eubanks, they were going to be the ones responsible to get us back where we belong. And uh, they're young, they're inexperienced, but boy, they, they're a tough-minded group, and they're a confident group, and, and that gives us confidence where we're going to get where we need to be. Yeah, that's really good to hear. And I know Roderick uh, Adela, you know, he's coming back in from an injury. I think it was an Achilles injury. And I'm I'm curious how he is now. I'm assuming, you know, he's okay because I hadn't read anything, right? And then how will he affect things being at his – you know, his normal speed. Yeah. Well, he just, he's, he's really good in the locker room. He doesn't allow for any nonsense. He's a hard worker. Uh, He really wants to win and, and he, he loves the physical aspect and kind of dominating around the basket uh, on both ends. He's an older guy and, and the guys, he's not a vocal leader, but he Mm -hmm. sets the tone with his focus and with his energy and, and he's a guy we know we can throw it to down there and something good's going to happen, whether whether he scores it or, you know, comes inside out. He's very unselfish. So it's nice that our young group of bigs have a guy like him to look to day in and day out of how he goes about his work. And he's very experienced. You know, he 
his junior year, he played a lot for us, was a big part of that run. And it was unfortunate last year, we lost him after five games uh, and we lost his, you know, just really his spirit um, out there day in and day out. So his consistency and his willingness to be a great teammate really helped set the tone. That, that willingness to be a great teammate, that has leadership from him, I think, written all over it. For sure. He, yeah. he, you know, when he first got here, it was, it was kind of like, he, you know, most guys get to a new situation. They want to be a big piece and it's about stats and all that. But then as he learned the importance uh, of us being successful at the Pac-12 level, it took everybody working together and he bought into it. And like I said, he's a great kid. You never have to worry about him in the classroom or off the court. Um, and he brings his hard hat and lunch pail every day to practice. And, um, and then he impacts the game. And so the young guys see that formula. They know that they replicate it as best they can. It's going to lead to good things. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, I, I counted nine new Beavers uh, with four who stayed. So what are some things uh, like through uh, maybe, maybe the spring and, of course, the summer and now the preseason as the new group shown you? Well, we, you know, we, we weren't able to bring them all together until the summer. But mm -hmm. what they've done, what, the unbelievable thing is what a cohesive unit they are. Like we were in Italy, and when they, when they went to get gelato, they all went together. It wasn't groups of two or three. Uh, we saw some unbelievable historical things from, you know, the Sistine Chapel to, you know, the, the, the mural of the Last Supper to the Roman Coliseum. And they were like a school of fish, just everybody, you know, walking darn near arm in arm, you know, and, and it just built an incredible chemistry. The young guys came in a little, little cocky and they had to learn from some of our former players and pick up games. That's not the way to go about it here. You can be confident, but you keep your mouth closed and you go about your work. So that was neat to see how that changed some of our new guys and then how they meshed and gelled with the returners and how they put the program first, nothing individual, and their willingness to admit they don't have all the answers. They know they've got a lot to learn. That's been the biggest thing um, that that group, that young group of guys, six freshmen in total, um, have have learned in the last few months and that's why we enjoy practice so much we're not having to coach attitudes or effort and uh, that that makes us feel good that we're going to be able to really grow throughout this year yeah I, you know lots of coaches have told me that building a team often comes from like you guys did you went to Italy you know they they leave the country and and they have different uh realms they go through other than just basketball for sure i mean these guys enjoyed an experience i don't know unless they go to europe and play one day that they might not ever ever had that opportunity um and and so you know our programs it's more just than just growth basketball wise we're trying to help really groom potential future great husbands and fathers contributors to their communities and, and it's, it's, a, it's an everyday way of life. They, they see it, how we go out to a restaurant and we treat the service people and the people that mow the lawns on campus and serve the food. Uh, it, that all goes hand in hand in what we're trying to do here at Oregon State. And they know until we win out there in that environment, we're not going to win come game time. And this group's bought into it. So great cultural and educational experiences, but also development as basketball players and young men as well. Awesome. Now, Glenn Young and then Dexter uh, Acano, I think, right? Yeah, Glenn Taylor and Dexter Acano, yes. Yeah, that, that's going to be, you know, two kids that are coming back, uh, you know, like Rodrigo. Talk a little bit about them and what they have to lend on and off the court. Yeah, De Dexter's going to probably, we've had a couple of injuries to two of our transfers. So Dexter's had to mix and match a little bit from the point to the two guard to the small forward position. Same with Glenn Taylor, but two guys that can score at all three levels. Dexter's been, I think, every day, an hour early before practice, getting up shots, full sweat. So he's really put in a lot of effort. Um, Glenn has as well. Glenn's only just a sophomore where Dexter's been out, you know, a couple of years at Marquette. He's a little more mature age-wise, but those two have really, we, we've held the candle to them to set the tone 
um, with, with their attitudes, with their work habits, uh, with their cohesiveness and leadership, and, and they've responded quite well, uh, as well as Rodrigue. Rodrigue's had a couple of nicks and scrapes. He's missed a little bit of time, but those two are the ones we hold accountable every day. Um, we don't let them drop, drop their chins. We don't let them get down if it's not going their way. Uh, and they've really bought into that. And obviously, out on the court, uh, they're, they're going to have a bulk of the load to carry offensively, not just scoring-wise, but playmaking, uh, making sure you know we're running our stuff, we're getting the ball where it needs to, making plays, and really kind of being that example of unselfish team team type uh, you know players. Uh, and the young guys have followed that. So big, big pieces for sure. Good deal. Now, I remember Cole Mariel at Maryland, and, of course, he's 7'2", 235. How, how is he coming along, and how is he bringing his game forward? Yeah, you know, the big thing with him with all the problems he had with his shins was to really work on his strength and conditioning and mm -hmm. getting healthy. Uh, he, you know, he had to get healthy first, and so he's still in that process. Um, he can't log big consecutive minutes. But his skill level, you know, at 7'2 with a 7'5 wingspan, you know, he, he's really a, a great defender of the rim defensively. Um, you know, he's got to get better because teams are going to draw him out away from the basket and put him in the pick and roll game, but he's gotten better there. And then offensively, he's pretty skilled. He can step out and shoot it at three. Um, he's got great jump hooks to both shoulders. Uh, he's really worked hard with Coach Reveno, who's new to our staff uh, this offseason. Yeah. Uh, he, he's catching the ball. He's a good and willing passer out of the post. So we need to be patient with his, you know, getting to 100% health wise, but still get him game experience. Um, we think he can have a great impact for us, you know, throughout the year. Yeah, I, I noticed some of your freshmen uh, that are that are coming in, you know, to, to the program, Tyler Billado, Jaden Stevens, and then Michael. Uh, Retai. Retai. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I had them, I had them listed uh, on my little chart I made. Yeah. No, they're, uh, they've been, they've been really impressive. Uh, Billado and Michael Retai are more four, four threes, can play some five. Retai is from Germany, very, very mature for his age. He's played on their national team in their pro league uh, and in his level. So very experienced, you know, playing internationally. Probably right now our best perimeter defender at six nine, he, yeah. he guards our point guards. He can guard centers. Really a good wing defender offensively. He's got a great skill set, getting to the paint, making plays. Really relentless rebounder on both ends. Tyler might be our best back to the basket guy already right now. He and Andela very skilled at six eight, hard, hard working, tough kid from Kennewick, Washington. His mom mm -hmm. played in the WNBA. Dad was drafted in the NHL. Kid grew up playing hockey, so you know he's tough. Oh, yeah. yeah, mom's a Montana girl, so you know he's tough. Yeah, uh, and then Jaden Stevens has been a real delight. I tell you, Ken, he was a little, he was pretty under recruited. He played at Gonzaga Prep, a very good high school in Spokane, mm -hmm. but he played the five because he was the tallest kid. And uh, you know, it's funny how you run into these kids. I was at a gym to watch another game. I saw that game and I didn't want to just leave. I stuck around and watched some more and I saw Seattle Rotary and this kid was running the floor, crashing the glass, hitting shots. And so we followed him uh, his junior year and just fell in love with him. And we, we mm -hmm. feel like at the three for us, and he can play a couple different positions. He stretches the floor, relentless rebounder. I mean, really a, a sprint rebounder from the perimeter. Um, he's going to be, uh, have a great and he already has I mean he was our energy off the bench in Italy our exhibition game the other night so we're, we're excited about those three uh, as well as Jordan Pope who played at prolific prep a scoring point guard he's playing his best basketball uh, right at the right time here um, crafty off the dribble pulls up on a dime and can shoot it with uh, you know with some distance and then Nick Crass who's from Gulfport Mississippi our good buddy Tim Floyd turned us on to him Oh, wow. And yeah, just uh, a really good shooter, solid fundamental player. We've had to play him some on the second team at the point with the injuries uh, mm -hmm. that we've had uh, to Wright and Rochelin. And he's taking it on and he's fighting to learn defensively. Um, you know, tough kid. He had 12 points in our exhibition game and 
three assists, only one turnover. And so we like that young group right there, and they're going to have to mature quickly. And we may take some on the chin, um, you know, developing that, but they're the right kind of kids playing the right way, and we know that um, it's going to lead to success. Coach, what are your thoughts? There, the rumors, you know, are out there that the NCAA tournament might expand. What, what are your thoughts on that? And then I, I'll give you an example for me. When I did the research after I had the accident and all that stuff, I couldn't believe the Pac-12 only had three teams in there last year. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I don't agree. I don't agree with that. Um, yeah. You know, I'm I don't I'm not not going to knock the Mountain West because they they've got some good teams, but you look at some of the leagues that got a bunch of teams and they didn't perform real well. You know, sure. And you look at what the Pac-12 did just the year before, um, but that's on us a little bit too. We've got to have a little more success in the non-conference. Um, I'm a little worried about expansion with the NCAA tournament because it's such a good thing, you yeah. know, right now, and and you can't be afraid of change. But if the argument is we need to get better teams in, I'm for expansion versus taking away automatic qualifiers from the low to mid major leagues. I would never sure. vote. For, I would never vote for that. You know, coming no. from the Big Sky Conference, heck yeah, they deserve to have an automatic qualifier. And so, mm -hmm. if you want to make it a, a, I guess, a pool or a tournament of teams with more talent, expansion, I would vote for that then you know more more quickly than i would taking away you know six or eight automatic qualifying bids from other leagues for sure yeah that's what i definitely think I, you know and i think even my thought was okay you could go to 96 teams and give a buy to those top 32 and then you make sure you have like you're saying you don't or the my own uh experience is you don't want to ever leave any of those like conferences it might be 25 through 33 for example right. out of there no it's too much like football for crying out loud no. i mean everybody should have their own bid in there in my opinion and the same thing in in, in college basketball no i couldn't agree more there's a reason they call it march madness and uh, mm -hmm. I, I think a part of the, a big part of the allure is, you know, the David versus Goliath and some of those upsets and, um, oh, yeah. you know, those are division one conferences. They all should be represented in our national tournament for sure. Sure. Last thing, coach, uh, what parts of the game, uh, allow you to upgrade your players, beliefs and strengths, uh, in teaching the game? You know, I, I think the fact that I was a player and, and played at some high levels uh, brings a certain credibility. And, and then, you know, our history, we've had success both at Montana and Oregon State. Um, even through the involvement and the changes that are so prevalent in our game now, we've had to adjust, um, you know, with players being able to leave now at the drop of a hat, even sometimes midseason without penalty. Um, it, we've had to curb how, you know, we have to remain true to who we are, but also, you know, it's a different day and, and kids are, are have some different pressures on them. So, you know, our guys need to know that if we're going to push and challenge them to break down those barriers, we all put, you know, in front of ourselves uh, at that age to stay comfortable. We got to love them through the process as well. And, and if they're real with themselves, they'll appreciate the way we go about it. And, and if, unfortunately, there's some that, can't think that way. And it's all about them trying to do all they can for themselves and not be the part of the bigger picture of the program, then, then you're going to lose some guys. But um, our guys love, and I'm blessed with great coaches, um, the way we invest in them individually and not just, like I said earlier, not as players, um, not just as students, but really as young men. Um, and, and the ones that see through it, and even though there's some tough growing pains, they really appreciate that process and all we do for them. And I think that's what's allowed us to maintain relative consistency um, in all of our programs. Coach Wayne Tinkle, ladies and gentlemen, the Oregon State Beavers. Uh, we're looking forward to checking these guys out here very soon on probably, well, on the Pac-12 network. Or there you whatever. go. 
Yep, Pat 12 Network, ESPN Fox, hopefully. So all the best. Great being with you, buddy, and I'm glad you're doing well. Thank you. It's great to see you and great to talk to you.